a few of you have asked me about Bob Ross's techniques and I was wondering what can I say that you don't already know. I mean, there are so many episodes of the joy of painting available everywhere and we see everything, right? Bob Ross explains every single detail and brush strokes. So, well... Since the 70s, Bob Ross has been a staple of the amateur painting community. His technique, the wet on wet, has been copied and used many times around. Ross himself borrowed this technique from Bill Alexander, his old master. Bob Ross never said he was teaching art, but a craft, and boy was he a good teacher. His explanations are clear, his voice is soothing, and there is something in the motto, there are only mistakes, only happy accidents, that really empowers all the hobbyists out there. Yet, there is a kind of mystery to Bob Ross. How many of us have watched countless episodes of The Joy of Painting, but never really managed to get the desired effect? The misty mountain, the big old tree, the happy cloud. We see him painting in detail, but there is still something that escapes us. And as my brain works in mysterious ways, this made me think of Colombo. For the younger among us, you probably don't know Colombo. He was the TV detective in the 70s, 80s, and part of the 90s. He always found the killer thanks to his fantastic brain, better than Sherlock Holmes, Hercule Poirot, and Miss Marple put together. But the format of the Colombo series was very different from other Houdinists where other screen detectives makes you guess who is the murderer at the same time as them, Colombo let the audience know from the start who is the killer. The first part of each episode is the murder itself, and you know who, how, when and why the murder was committed. You see all this and yet you think, this is a perfect murder. He erased all the clues, he has an alibi, the police will never find him. But the Lieutenant Colombo arrived with his old cigar and a trench coat that has seen better days, not looking like a threat, and he solved the case, usually because of a small detail that the killer forgot and that we, the audience, didn't see or didn't think of. Well, Bob Ross is a bit the same. We think, I've seen everything, I know how he did it, nothing seems difficult, but I can't do it. Why? What detail did I miss? I don't know about you, but I would like to see Colombo meeting Bob Ross. And fortunately for you, I have this episode on hand. Let's take a look. Don't worry, I will uh, uh, just clean my brushes and switch off everything on my way out. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you. It's just you and me. Good morning. What's happening? I saw a lot of police cars outside. I'm so 
sorry, Bob. There was an accident with your painting last night. What? Uh, sir, excuse me. You should let the police do its job. Uh, there won't be any visit today. Please leave the studio immediately. I'm so sorry, sir. I am the uh, Lieutenant Colombo from the LAPD uh, Homicide Division. I must say I'm a big fan, sir. My wife and I never miss an episode. She even tried to follow some of your instruction, but never managed to put the landscape together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, practice makes perfect. She has to persevere. Can I get you an autograph? Oh, if it's not too much to ask, sir. <laughs> My wife will be so happy. I would have a few questions for you, though, just routine stuff, of course. It won't take too much of your time. Questions? But you said you were from homicide. I thought this was an accident. Well, that's the general theory, sir. But you see, I'm not too sure. Why? Well, first, there is the thing with the... Um, what was that? The liquid white. Yeah. Well, I, I put a thin layer of liquid white on the canvas before starting the painting. Um, I say it in every episode. Well, that's my issue, sir. First of all, you don't say it in every episode. I guess you sometimes forget and that's not a big problem. But you never explain why you do it or how it works. Yes, the famous liquid white. We sometimes learn that it is to make the sliding of the brush easier. And while it most certainly helps, it is not the only reason. If it was, Bob Ross could put any other color or even transparent medium for that matter. But white mixes with the dense colors that are applied and create a natural gradient the more you brush. This allows you to be much faster in your gradients and smoother since you don't have to guesstimate the next color you have to use. You see, I can start with a dark blue at the top of the sky, but it will fade to a lighter blue by the time I reach the horizon line. In the same way, it allows me to blend in the bottom of my mountain and create this foggy effect so dear to Bob Ross. Without this layer of liquid white, you keep applying the same color as it doesn't become lighter. Your sky or your mountains will therefore be monochromatic. Well, I hope this answers your question, Colombo. Oh, totally, sir. Thank you so much. That makes sense. Um, although... What? Well, it doesn't work with your mountains, sir. The misty bottom, uh, yes, but the top? What do you mean? Well, if the purpose of the liquid white is uh, to make everything smoother, it would be a problem when you do the delicate snow on the top of the mountain, right? You need the paint to stick there, not slide off your brush, and with a high contrast, not a gentle blade. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Colombo, but once again, it's not a secret. I say it in every episode. Do you really? Well, yes and no. Once again, Bob Ross details all of the steps but doesn't tell us why it works. First, if you remember well, he asks us to scrape the mountain shape. This removes most of the liquid white from underneath, making the surface highly adhesive. 
you reveal the surface of the canvas and at the same time you are pushing the dark paint into all the nooks and crannies leaving the cyan fiber exposed. Then you brush down the surface this not only removes what could be left of the paint on the surface, making it drier so the paint will stick, but it also creates a uniform color so you have a better contrast with your white snow. The consistency of the paint is very important too. Bob Ross often say that they are sticky and thick paint, not the liquid type. And I agree that it is not too much of a problem with oil paint because most of them are, are thick anyway. But for people like me who paint with acrylics, we know that most of the time the paint is so liquid it pours right out of the tube. There are several brands that propose high viscosity paint and these are the ones you should use for this type of technique or for knife painting in general. If you didn't scrape the liquid white with your palette knife, or if you didn't use a high viscosity paint, you would end up with a thick mess where the two colors are mixing and don't create the illusion of contrast. Well, there you go, Colombo. You can accuse me of not saying everything every time, but this painting was still a happy little accident. I guess so, sir. Thank you very much for your help. I will keep you posted. Oh, just one more thing. Yes? For your tree, sir, you seem to be mixing the colors at random, a bit of this, a bit of that, but I know there is more to it than that, sir. Of course, Bob Ross knew very well that the further you go from the viewer, the lighter and the bluer the colors will become. You see, Bob Ross's tree can be decomposed in three basic elements. The leaves behind, the trunk, and the leaves in front that catch the highlight. To indicate the distance from the viewer, the colors of these three elements should be very precisely determined. At the back of the painting, there is little contrast between the shadow and the highlight. Both are bluish and light. This is why most of the time small trees done in one single color are enough. But the closer you get, the more the contrast is important. The inner foliage becomes darker and the highlight becomes brighter. You can see on this picture, the trees at the back are almost completely made of blue. The colors are not very contrasting, but when you get closer, the trees in front offer the most contrast with an inside foliage almost completely black. And this allows you to place the trees in space, farther or closer to the viewer, and create a sense of depth. And Bob Ross knew this very well, as he always started his trees by the top, leaving the door open to place the base of the tree higher or lower, depending on the value he used. On the opposite, a sharp contrast at the back and a light one at the front would not translate as a deep point of view, and your painting would look flat, out of focus, or just plain weird. How did you know, Colombo? Well, I had my suspicion when I learned that you don't only make one painting per episode, sir. You do three. Exact same painting. One to prepare the show, one during the show, and one more detailed to take picture for the beauty shot at the end. One time could be an accident, twice maybe a coincidence, but Three times really show premeditation. These are not happy little accidents, sir. You certainly beat the devil out of me, Colombo. Okay, 
I hope these tips help you understand better the craft of painting like Bob Ross. I'll see you next time and cheers. <laughs>